As I was reading Romans uh, today, uh, this verse just really struck out to me from nowhere. And it's um, Romans chapter 9, verses 1 to 3. This is Paul um, who says, I speak the truth in Christ. I'm not lying. My conscience confirms it through the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. And this is what he's anxious or anguished about. For I, for I could wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my people, those of my own race. I mean, I've heard and this is what uh, me, I myself believe that, you know, if you can be saved, if you can know Christ, why don't you? Um, you one might be ready to lay down their lives for others to know Christ, to be martyrs for Christ. But here Paul is being specific and he's saying, he's not talking about laying down his life or sacrificing his life, but he's talking about, I could wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ himself, if it meant that his own people, the Israelites, would know who Jesus really is. Um, and this he's not just saying it because he says he's deeply anguished um, and you know his conscience confirms it through the Holy Spirit this is a serious matter for him and he's deeply deeply hurt it's not just a statement now we know that nothing can cut you out from Christ because Paul um, also says in the just the previous chapter last verses of Romans chapter 8 that nothing not even death can separate you from the love of god in christ so paul's not talking about the act of separation from christ but he's talking about the deep anguish and desire that he has for his people just to know god the savior jesus christ who um saves them now i don't want to conclude this verse without kind of um pointing on some of the doubts or the questions that um, might arise um, so is God not powerful enough is his power limited um, there might be questions like um, I mean Jesus just sacrificed his own life to save the people now is a does a man have to go through the situation where he even needs to consider being cut off from God to once again save or redeem the people these are some of the questions that can arise by just reading this verse so I'm just going to point out a few verses I'm not going to go into detail at all just going to read out a few verses that will give you the outline or the context um, which you can read and understand in your own time just so you understand that no way God's power is not limited and Paul doesn't mean that he has to do something in order to save the people again because that's not at all what he means he's just making his desire his deep anguish situation um, make known he's just making it known um, and before I go into the context, I'm just going to say a little bit about um, the heart of Paul. It talks about his love, which goes beyond just um, brotherly love, you know, everyday love. Oh, I will lay down my life for you. He's not even talking about that kind of love. He's even talking about if it meant I could be cut off from Christ if it means that the whole people would be saved that's kind of where he is at that's his um, frame of mind however he doesn't need to know that because he explains it very very clearly in the next few verses that I'm going to read out just the context um, as an outline we won't discuss that today um, in the same chapter verse number six it is not as though God's word had failed for not all who are descended from Israel are Israel. So the point is, it's not as though God's word had failed. Hey, hang on a minute. Don't think God is 
limited in power. And then in chapter 11, verses 1 and 2. Did God reject his people? No means, by no means. I'm an Israelite, this is Paul. He's an Israelite himself, a descendant of Abraham from the tribe of Benjamin. God did not reject his people for whom for um, whom he foreknew. Um, another verse, just for the context, chapter 11, verse 11. Did they stumble so as to fall beyond recovery? Not at all. Again, ch same chapter 11, verse 25. Here is a real key verse to the whole context and the beauty and magnificence of God's power, his salvation. Um, it's, it's beyond what you and I can fathom. Um, I do not want you to be ignorant of this mystery so that you may not be conceited. Israel has experienced a hardening in part until the full number of the Gentiles has come in. And in this way, all Israel will be saved. Verse 26 again. In this way, all Israel will be saved. I'm really not going to go into um, this topic to discuss it because I just read out the context. Um, but I just want to point out the heart of Paul here. Have you, I haven't, have you ever considered that if it meant, if it meant that the whole world would know who Jesus is, then I'm ready to be cut off from Christ? I mean, that's a bizarre thought because that would never happen. But have you considered it? And to me, that's unconditional love that Paul is expressing here that's an amazing love that you can only experience when you really know the full extent of what God has done because nothing can separate you from God's love but he's ready to give everything up if it meant his people would know who the true God is so um, just be encouraged by this that you know, God's love is beyond anything uh, that we can fathom. When we really understand God's love, we will be ready to give up anything and everything. Because God's love is com made complete in us when it flows out to others around us. It says in a different book, um, in John, uh, I think it's John. How can you say you love God if you don't show that love to people around you um, or your brother or your neighbor? Um, so, yeah, stay blessed. Hope it's encouraged you.